Today, we're going to have a look at a uh, common fault and a particular model of, of hard disk drive uh, relating to the drive's firmware uh, in our Western Digital Series drive, a model WD3200AAJS. Um, this particular uh, engineering uh, revision is known as uh, Pinnacle. We're going to drive in, just came in uh, the other day, showing um, typical symptoms. Um, the drive uh, is not recognized at all by the computer and um, won't show a model number. Uh, sounds perfectly normal, no clicking or, or tapping sounds. The, the symptoms of a firmware failure in this particular series can, can vary when it comes to, to working on them. Uh, this is one of the, actually the, the easier version of the, of the failure, and I'll be showing why in a second. So, um, and so we're just gonna load up the recovery environment and initialize power on the, the drive. Now this drive, normally when you power on a drive, it takes maybe about one second to become enter a ready state. You can see here from the status register, we're still in a busy state after powering the drive a few seconds ago. Now is this drive's already been worked on and all the data's been recovered, we know how it's gonna react. So eventually it should enter a ready state. There we go, so DRD, DSC, that's short for ready. However, when we come to identify the drive, we're going to open up Utility. It's detected already automatically. It's a Western Digital Marvel series. I'm going to run the Utility. We click Auto Detect. Now, normally, if the drive is working perfectly and it can load up all the correct information about the drive, the ROM, the firmware, it will enter a normal mode. Rather than this, it's called the kernel mode. It's kind of an engineering mode that allows you to interact with the drive um, even when it's not possible to interact with it in the in the normal mode. So we're going to start the utility. And as I say, this is um, this is positive because it's identifying the correct details in the ROM, including the firmware revision. When working on Western Digital Drives, it's very important uh, to be able to, when, when finding donor parts or donor firmware, to be able to identify the particular revisions like the, uh, the, the ROM firmware uh, revision denoted there and, and up, up here. Now normally what we do is also view a particularly important module that again gives us some more information. It tells us obviously the Again, just confirming the ROM vision and the number of heads in the in the drive. But you can see here, normally where the model serial firmware and capacity, we're not getting any identification whatsoever. If we try and view a sector, view some data, LBA0, first sector, just get an abort command. So no data is currently accept, um, accessible. That's why the, the drive was in. So no way any PC shop or IT support company is going to be able to, to deal with this one. It requires a specialist environment. Drive's not going to have to be opened up um, in, in this case. We know that uh, the heads are most likely to be okay. So what we're going to be doing is using some configuration information from a matching hard disk drive. It's what we call a loader. LDR. Now, hopefully, this particular version of Western Digital Drive is going to be in our database. If it's not, we have to go and find one. Now, that might mean searching Internet Archives or physically finding an identical hard disk drive um, that's fully working to then be able to create a, uh, a loader. But again, as I know, as we've worked on this one already, we know that this is already in our database. So we do a search based on the ROM content. And we get the, the key modules here. I'm going to load these. And as I say, this is going to provide 
some basic parameters for the the hard disk drive to be able to get it initialized and hopefully into to be able to access what's called the service area where we can then read the firmware and then potentially correct any firmware modules to then get normal access to the hard disk drive now you can see the drive we're using here wd 2500 aajs not an identical match in terms of the model but it's the as i say it's the firmware the rom content revision that we're interested in rather than the actual model number here so that's been successfully uploaded. Now if we press soft reset. Okay, now we're going to exit the utility. And reload it. Now we've loaded <coughs> the loaders. Aha, uh -huh. and now we can see it's now in a normal mode, correctly identifying the model, serial number, firmware, and capacity of the drive. Let's click auto detect, but it should be okay. Now, as I said, this was the the easy version of the, 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 the pinnacle failure. There are some revisions where of the failure where it never gets into a ready state and we have to maybe use an alternative circuit board or a method where we alter a particular area of the service area to um, to stop it trying to load up bad bad modules essentially um, but this one's a, a straightforward one now we've got access to the SA we can take a look at the service area and the firmware modules I'm going to back up all these very important you can see again obviously we've uh, we've made an attempt here because we've worked on this drive so it's always very important to back up the the drive now normally this process takes between three to five minutes if a drive is working perfectly but you can see already we're starting to get some read errors And this is probably why the drive has failed, that there are firmware modules that are not loading correctly. It appears, looks as if these are mainly on copy zero. Now that's the from head zero. Normally hard disk drives, or certainly Western digital hard disk drives, have two copies of their, their firmware on head zero and head one. Head one is the backup copy. As I say, it looks like we're going to get quite a few errors on head zero. So this may take some time. Okay, about 20 minutes on now. Uh, we've just about finished reading the modules. As I say, lots of read errors, including on uh, head one as well so this would explain why the, the drive is not initializing correctly let's see as say i expect that should be able to read data at this stage yes we can there is sector sector zero the mbr uh, looks like a uh, windows operating system is most likely on on this device so what we do at this stage now we've got the, the drive initialized is we, we use the other function as well as being able to correct the firmware or emulate the, uh, the, the firmware of a drive to allow um, access. What we want to do is uh, now we've got this drive powered on and initialized is to start extracting data. If we power off the drive um, then we'll be back to square one. So what we do here is use data extractor to create a new task. We'll just give this a test uh, task name. Okay, so we're selecting the drive. Uh, this is the important bit. We're gonna, whenever working with a hard disk drive, always even just making a small number of reads, want to be getting that data copied to a 
another media straight away. And the reason being is when working on hard disk drives, you never know whether they're going to fail completely or get worse. Um, so it's really important making any attempt uh, on a drive and recovering data that we get that data to another media. Now we can either select an entire new drive. In this case, we're just going to create what we call file images. So it's going to chunk data into files. Okay. Next, we're going to create a head map. And sometimes what happens with hard disk failure is you get one read write head that is much weaker than the others, and that's creating all the read errors. And we can choose to avoid that read write head, read data from the other heads first, and then go back to that tricky head afterwards. Now, in this case, the model of drive, I know there are only going to be two read write heads, um, but obviously with with um, higher capacity drives or with a, with a lower media density, we may have up to eight read write heads, so it can be a very useful function. Okay, that's complete. So now we have the choice to read only on head one, head zero and head one. Now the other thing we've got to do before we start reading, is as I mentioned, if the drive is powered off, then we'll lose that loader that was uh, uploaded for it, and we won't be able to access data. And sometimes when there's a read error or a loss of readiness, the uh, parameters specified by default will power off and on the drive. So we're going to disable that and a hardware reset as well at the moment. The same goes for error handling. Here we specify if it does find a read error that it jumps on a total of 256 error, uh, sectors. Often when there's one read error there can be multiple areas of the drive that, that it struggles to read. So fine to begin with, it's just best to skip those bad areas. And equally here, we're going to leave unchecked for now the read backwards when it does find a, an error. Okay, so we have the drive set up. Let's see if we can view the folder and file structure. Okay, so we can see from the, the boot record, it's specifying there are a total of four partitions. It's likely that at least one or two of those are going to be system partitions with um, a operating system on, which are obviously not going to be of a great deal of interest. Have a look at this one. We can tell from the size actually here. Oh, let's get back a level here that that one's a, a total of 15 gigabytes. That's likely to be the, uh, let's say, the, the installation for the computer. Another small partition there. Again, that's only about 400 megabytes. Again, not of much interest. Now we've got two main partitions here, um, about 110 and 175 gigabytes in size. So they're the ones we're going to be interested in. Okay, so we've got into the folder and file structure now. Now we can, when doing recovery, we can either go to select particular files if we can load up the file table, or as is common practice, particularly with drives that are not heavily degraded, is that we can select all files on the basis of um, information from the bitmap. I'm going to copy the and in this case, the uh, the bitmap is saying that there's a total of 63, 63 and a half gigabytes of allocated space. So we're going to click Start here. And now we're just imaging only the allocated space, about 63 and a half gigabytes from 110 gigs. So it's cutting down on the amount of imaging that's going to save time. Um, but as well as that, it's going to hopefully improve the results too. Now 
I know in this case, on this hard disk drive, it's not heavily degraded because we've obviously worked on it already. So we're just going to copy all the data in this case. But often if you get drives with a lot of read errors, then rather than copying the entire disk, we're going to focus on particular files. I'll just go back a stage. Usually what we do in this case is try and read the master file table in completion. That's the thing that creates a lot of the folder and file names. It's just reading that now. Again, this drive, it's reading very well. You can see that all the green blocks are sectors that have been read OK. Normally, if there are errors, then it shows up as black or maybe red. And now, if we want to save particular files, so say the Documents folder, we can create a, uh, just for for speed, we'll just uh, select a single folder, and we can create a map. And this defines the particular sectors that are used on the hard disk drive. At the moment, these run red for only a couple of documents, a dissertation by the looks of it, an academic dissertation. And we can read those in particular. And those have been now recovered OK. And that is it on this job. What we do normally is get the drive imaging, leave that to run. If there are any tricky areas to read, then maybe a second pass will, a uh, second set of read attempts will take place. And then we'll extract the files and test those and make sure that each of them are working OK um, ahead of, and we send that file listing that details the files recovered and whether they're working or not through to the customer, wait for approval, and at which point we get the data then extracted in the, uh, in the form of files on an external drive for return. So that's how we deal with a, a firmware failure in this particular model of Western Digital Drive. Let's say this one here, WD3200AAJS. As I say, this was the simple version. It can be much more challenging on this particular model of, of, of drive. Um, but as you can see, no need to be necessarily taking hard disks apart. Um, in terms of what we classify it as in our pricing structure, it counts as a firmware failure. We include the cost of donor parts within that. Um, sometimes we obviously do we have the resources available within our database, but I say sometimes we also have to get donor parts in uh, to attempt the work, and I say we include the cost of that within any quote. So, thank you.